Salutations, everybody. It is Maddie here today, sitting down for our first Starfield news update since the gameplay dropped at the Xbox Bethesda Showcase. IGN's Ryan McCaffrey sat down to interview Todd Howard, and man, did my boy drop some bombs. Literally, he talked about Fallout 5, but he also gave us a ton of brand new information on Starfield, which kind of caught me off guard because I thought, well, we got like 15 minutes of gameplay. Let that speak for itself. Let us deep dive into that. And Todd's like, nope, more details here for you, but also clarifications that I think are really important. So we're going to sift through all of that in this interview. If you want to know my thoughts on when Todd talks about Fallout 5, Elder Scrolls 6, I wanted to make sure this video was focused on Starfield, so I split it up. I talked about it in a separate video. That'll be linked in the description down below if you want to check that out. It's our second video of the day. Thank you all so much for being so gracious and supportive of this plethora of content where I'm trying to match my usual quality bar while also doing quantity. It's been tough, but you all have been so supportive. It's really given me that extra push. So thank you so much again. And with that, let's get into the news update. If you're new here looking for Starfield news, information, coverage, you're in the right place. Subscribe. And now... Let's start off with not the interview. Yes, surprise, surprise. One thing that was confirmed separately on Twitter that I wanted to make sure I put in here is that Starfield will have dialogue in first person and your character does not have a voice. To my shock and awe, I saw there was a lot of debating about this online. I don't get it. I, I really don't because I understand why people liked having a voice character in Fallout 4 because maybe you connect to that character more. But the amount of sacrifices I felt it came with on a writing front, on a role-playing front, it's so obvious. And now when we hear in this interview, by the way, that there's over 200,000 lines of dialogue. And last October, when we heard about Starfield at the Tokyo Game Show, 150,000. The, the, the Mad Men have written over 50,000 lines of dialogue in like six to eight months. Insane. There's so much stuff here. I'm hoping this means a lot of, you know, alternate endings to quest lines and a lot of lore to explore. It's really exciting stuff. But to me, seeing that there is no voice for the protagonist with the backgrounds, with the traits, it's like, yes, let me be me. I, I loved Brian T. Delaney. I love Courtney Taylor. They're my homies. Y'all know I've interviewed them. I talk with them. I'm friends with them. They are excellent. But look, voice protagonist to me, just hindsight 2020. Not it. Not it. When I want a good RPG, I don't want to hear anyone's voice but the person I'm talking to. So I thought this was an excellent confirmation. Certainly Starfield can't fail now, right? Right? I joke. But anyway, that was our first big confirmation. Now let's get into the actual information from Todd Howard. So at the end of the gameplay showcase, Todd shows us over 1,000 planets. And that was a number that scared many of us. Oh God, why does an ocean deep as a puddle? Please, please don't do this to us, Todd. And he provided some clarification on that while also acknowledging, yes, that's kind of a staggering number. What does that mean? First and foremost, they provide the information that they are looking to do some type of deep dive of some kind on how this actually works and what it feels like, how they pulled it off. Because for a lot of people who don't know, Bethesda has always done procedural generation, dating back even to something like Oblivion with their terrain, their landscaping, Morrowind the same way. But even Skyrim on questing, the dynamic, never-ending quest lines that you would get in Skyrim were procedurally generated. And to me, I remember the first time I encountered those in Skyrim, I, I loved them. And I'm not a procedural generation guy at all. So there will be that type of content. That is confirmed, but I think the plan for Bethesda is to show us, like, here's how this planet that's just a resource farm works versus this side planet that you can explore and what exploration's like versus this main planet. At least, to me, that would be ideal. But then it gives us the information that we really needed to hear that Starfield has more handcrafted content than any previous Bethesda Game Studios game. Now, with it being their biggest, most ambitious game, that would make sense, right? I think that goes hand in hand with the scope and the scale that that would also scale up. And in turn, by default, they would offer the most handcrafted content. Does that directly solve the issue? I wouldn't say so. I don't think it's going to calm everyone's fears entirely. But to me, it was nice to know this is still a primary focus, which I know some people were not expecting. Because with all the No Man's Sky comparisons going around about this game, you know, a lot of people said, well, we didn't really see questing inside the Starfield gameplay. I mean, look, it's a BGS style game. It's going to be, it's going to have questing. Fret not. I promise you there will be quests in Starfield. You heard it here first. For me, I think my 
fears, if you will, will be settled down a bit when we actually see that deep dive, perhaps, on how the planets differ from one another. That said, Todd does acknowledge this, and we'll talk about it later, but this kind of becomes a modder's paradise. So to me, even if a lot of this stuff is blank and empty, which a lot of it will be, by the way, that's fine. Someone's going to take it and turn it into something amazing, and that's going to be really cool. And I know for some that sounds like an excuse, but with a thousand planets, it's just like the terrain's there. Just build something on top of it, and modders are going to go crazy with this. But Todd also talked a bit about the nature of some of these planets, mentioning how what could be fun about an ice ball? Well, sometimes planets are literally just that. Like sometimes you're just going to see an icy planet and it's that. There's not going to be content there. He's very open and honest about that. He also talks about how wandering some of these planets is like Daggerfall, where random content is just going to pop up. And I just wanted to say on that note, it's insanely refreshing to hear Bethesda talk about these styles of games when talking about their newest game versus what we heard with like Fallout 4 and 76, where it just seemed like these were games designed to be mass marketable, where this is obviously also mass marketable, but it's a hardcore RPG at the same time. Like referencing Daggerfall and how you built certain systems, awesome. You know, we of course already heard about Oblivion, so I'm loving that type of stuff. But again, it looks like there's going to be a lot of attempts, at least, at emergent gameplay occurring on these random planets you can land on and that could be really cool if done right now moving into space stuff we love space stuff in starfield right todd howard talks a bit more extensively about that he mentions ftl as an inspiration for putting all the power into particular systems within your starship he talks about dogfighting a little bit and how the pace of that actually feels and how it's at a slower pace, kind of like Mech Warrior, which was a really interesting callback. And I just want to say as a side note, I wish more developers continue to do this, which is just like openly talk about your inspirations. Oftentimes it's like using different terminologies and not mentioning other games like they're taboo when, you know, it's clear as day some games took inspiration from others. Like when it's a Breath of the Wild clone, they're like, no, actually we looked at Watch Dogs over there and we loved its sense of openness. It's like, but the graphical style is Breath of the Wild. Just say it, just say it, please stop lying to us. I just wish more teams were open about the games they're looking at when making their own. I think it's educational for everybody, but I think because of how stupid the internet can be at times I, I think it just leads to a lot of slander and easy criticism for people that these developers don't want to hear anyway focusing back on topic with the space stuff they talk again about how you can disable or steal ships so this was inside the starfield reveal todd did briefly mention stealing ships i did not catch that in any of my run throughs so hearing this i was like let me go back and it's there he does mention just like quickly uh, and steal them and then next sentence i was like oh my gosh so that's really, really awesome. It makes me wonder about how like your crewmates work in Starfield because they did confirm like you can hire crewmates to take care of stuff on your ship. What happens if you're on your ship, you go to another ship to steal it. Do you just leave your whole entire crewmate system over on another ship abandoned in outer space? I guess probably you could if you can just hire them. You could hire more staff for your brand new ship. But to me, that was awesome because... In the gameplay, you see you can dock into another ship. So it's like, oh, what if you docked into a space station and saw a ship there, took it, and then flew out in outer space? Is there like a bounty system where you get tracked down out there? My imagination is going crazy, but I think there's a lot of opportunity here. Continuing on, Todd also talks about how there are quests involved in boarding ships. There's also dialogue in space and even smuggling. So I imagine what the smuggling does is gives you another option to get resources that isn't the outposts. So the outposts, right, are these settlements that will generate resources for you. But maybe smuggling is like, well, I want to be a space pirate bad guy, something that, say, Fallout 4 didn't offer until Nuka World, where it's like, well, these settlements, you can have raiders run them now, so you are the bad guy. And that was a good option to offer. It seems a little bit inspired by that. You are going towards the same goal of getting resources. It's about how you do it, which I think good RPGs support. So I liked to hear that as well. A lot of options out in space, and it seems like it's going to be, in a lot of ways, its own game, which could be really cool. Continuing on, he was asked about the number of backgrounds in the game, and Todd said he's not 100% on this number because there's actually been some that were cut, but he says it's something like 20 in total, which would make a lot of sense. When you look at the actual screenshot for the amount of backgrounds, you see 16 are on screen with a little scroll bar that doesn't have much room to go down, where 20 seemed like a nice number. You know, that's what developers love the nice numbers 
Continuing on, he talks a bit about the set moments in the beginning of the game, how everyone's going to be on a similar path to start things off. And the reason for that is there's a few step out moments that are designed to be more impactful. So you're exiting the vault of Fallout 3, you're exiting the prison in Oblivion, those types of moments, those huge step out moments where you just see the world and go, oh my God, my life, I'm about to lose so many days to this game. So Starfield is planning to do that on multiple occasions, right? Because there are times you're going to see a planet in the distance. What's that? And there's times you're going to see something in the distance on the planet you land on. What's that? And you know, right, those are the step out moments. So there's going to be a lot of them. And that's going to feel great to have a game loaded with step out moments. Todd also talks about the cities in Starfield. This one I'm not so sure about. He says there's four main cities in the game. One of those being New Atlantis, which he calls easily the biggest and the biggest they have ever built. Now, when you look at Bethesda cities, I I think the biggest one that comes to mind to me off the top of my head is one, of course, the Imperial City in Oblivion, although it's separated by a ton of loading screens. Overall, the scope and scale of it is quite large. And I do think of some of the major holds in Skyrim, you know, something like Solitude, but when you look at even Fallout 4 with like Diamond City, not necessarily that big. And to me, four cities, I hope what this means is density. We did see at least some major cities in the trailer, Neon being one of them for sure. Now they're saying New Atlantis is another, and it's possible that Aquila is another major city. And so I'm hoping that these are extremely dense, offering us lots of quests and things to interact with because to me i was expecting a lot of cities and maybe that's a term for them internally versus like bits of civilization that you can encounter on these planets but i did expect this number to be higher i will totally admit because the reason i'm slightly concerned if you will about this is i think about the major cities that are offered that we have seen so far and none of them had aliens on them from what we saw maybe they were tucked away in other areas of the planet you know for example what we saw of neon which looks to be a very diverse place was right near the landing zone you could see signs talking about like a terminal nearby so it's like right when you enter the place again i don't want to judge too harshly too soon quite yet uh, but this number to me did seem lower and again the standard of bethesda cities that come to mind right here in the moment wasn't anything awe-inspiring and huge where i'm curious what their biggest city truly is like because even the fly through of new atlantis looked like a tighter location it didn't look super huge and expansive but again if that's exchanged for density something i loved about elden ring where it was wide and open but there were so many caverns and things to explore and buildings to go inside i love that stuff so to me that's what matters more so if it's decent size but there's a lot of places you can go into and interact with stuff a la bgs games That'll be great. Todd also confirmed that they are expecting the main story to be about 30 to 40 hours. Didn't expect this confirmation, but that falls roughly in line with how long a BGS main story takes. He said that usually they shoot for about 25. This one's about 20% longer given there's more quests. So he's expecting 30, maybe 40. But like any BGS game, I don't think in my entire lifetime I've ever straight shot the main story or hopped into a BGS game and went, yeah, you know what? I'm just playing the main story here. Like I'm just gunning it the whole way through. Never, ever, ever, ever. You know, I'll be honest, the uh, answer I was hoping to hear with this was like, oh, we went with like 25 hours, 20 hours, but there's lots of endings. There's still room to learn more about that. But to me, what I wanna hear more about going forward, I'm totally happy with what we have right now, right? This is enough to talk about, speculate about, think about, all that stuff. So don't get me wrong. I'm not getting greedy here. But one thing I want to hear about eventually with the lines of dialogue we have is hopefully what choice and consequence will be like. What will dialogue be like? And with the whole new dialogue system, apparently, in Starfield, I am really keen to see them show that off. And I do expect them to do so in a decent amount of time, probably sometime this year.
Todd confirmed that they are planning extra content for the game. I imagine that was to be expected, but you never know with their content output and how they're planning to do Elder Scrolls 6 as well as, of course, Fallout 5, so their plate is pretty full. They also believe that this will be a modder's dream with so much to do, as we have talked about pretty extensively. In that same breath, he confirms that you can't fly the ship straight down to the planet. This was one of the early design decisions for Starfield. He says he wants the surface to be one reality and space to be the other reality, and that the transition would take away from what matters. I saw some people expressing disappointment in this. To me, you know, the whole No Man's Sky taking off, going into the atmosphere and all that stuff. Cool at first. But eventually you see through what the trade-off is for that and the procedural generation and the millions of planets that you can find. Uh, yeah, you know, I, I get why people want this, so I'm not going to totally devalue it. But for what matters to me in a BGS game, which is worthwhile exploration and making those parts of that game good, whether I'm in space exploring and finding an abandoned space station or on the ground and finding a cave system with like a whole cult hiding in there. To me, that in particular is what really matters and not just being able to have technology that allows me to seamlessly transition from space into the planet or vice versa so again i understand why people wanted this for me i was like good good news there last but not least and this was at the complete tail end of the interview Todd said while he was thanking IGN that, by the way, Xbox has been incredible partners for us. And I don't know if it was forced in there. He had to jam it in there. Make sure you mention this, Todd. I don't know if that was really the case there. But I thought it was interesting to kind of point out because it seems to be something that on both sides they're very happy with. Um, so, yeah, that's everything we got for Starfield. I think at this point, though, where we are in the Bethesda Game Studios life cycle, people are not really willing to always listen and totally believe what Todd says with everything they got and that's even come from me who can't do that because of just the occasional hyperbole that comes by but I think more people are keen on seeing gameplay like for example how again the planet exploration works how the dialogue works what the choices are like and again exploring all of that so I figure if the game's coming out in say the middle of 2023 that We'll have more beats of gameplay probably throughout this year and especially into next year. So with that, ladies and gentlemen, that's everything for your Starfield news update today. Let me know what you're thinking in the comments down below. Other than that, follow me on Twitter, follow me on Instagram. Those links are in the description down below. And a big thank you to all the patrons, all the members who continue to support the hell out of the content here. Stay sexy, stay active. I love you all. Peace.